What is up, my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Destiny. Today, we are going to be doing quite a lot over the course of a single video, or at least I'm going to be doing quite a lot. I'm actually going to be combining uh, three separate weeks Ascendant challenges into one episode, because that's kind of really all we have left to do as far as weekly content is concerned here in the Dreaming City. So, let's head on over here to Petra. Let's talk to her really quickly. we got to make this kind of fast. So, I want to grab myself the Set a challenge. It says, at the overlook's edge, the garden grows onward. And there's your clue. Uh, looks like heroic public events is the challenge, so I'm not even going to bother with that. Now, this one is pretty straightforward. It says, the garden, where the garden grows. If you remember correctly, there is a location here in the Dreaming City that we've seen a couple of times. We've seen it in, I believe, one of the missions. Um, or actually possibly even two of the missions called the Gardens of Asila, and it's actually not too far away from here. You have to go to the Strand to get to it. So we're going to want to head up this way. And as soon as we go through the door over here, there is a... It is kind of this whole stairs that goes up, and then we're going to want to immediately hang a right once we get here into the three-way. You can't go to the left. It's all locked off. Just keep kind of following this path. You can absolutely sparrow your way all the way up here. And once you get up right about here, you'll see Gardens of Asila pop up. Now we're going to want to use our tincture so that the gateways, the seams between realities begin to weaken. And now, with that little flash that you just saw on screen, the portal is open. Let's head on over this way. I'm just going to kind of make my way past most of these enemies. I've got my uh, this Tiger Spy auto rifle that's going to do me a lot of good. And you head up over here, and there it is, just kind of hidden behind a rock. And here's the way this, uh, this one works. So you've got a few Abyssal Champions in here that you're going to need to take out, uh, just like the last one, honestly. Except for instead of destroying crystals, we need to dunk three balls. Now we're going to be going and getting these balls, these orbs by heading up a different pathways that are going to try to impede our progress. It's not too dissimilar from the last one, but it's actually a lot easier to see this time. You're actually going to be dealing with a lot more enemies in this one as opposed to any sort of platforming challenge. Although I do have Stompies just in case, not that I actually need it, but they're, they're there to make my life a little bit easier. But as we head up here, we're going to be challenged by the Abyssal Champions as well as these Phalanxes. They're going to try to boop us around. Just dunk it and you'll be able to basically get rid of everything around you, although they're going to respawn in quick succession. So you want to get the heck out of dodge as fast as you can. So we're just moving around, grabbing each of these, and then there is a catch once you have dunked all three orbs, because instead of just doing so and then the Abyssal Champions die, you still need to kill the Abyssal Champions. We've talked about them before, how they have quite a lot of health. Well... Don't worry, it's still going to be relatively easy. I'm going to drop a grenade there just because I can. I've already got my super for this, but it's not, like, super necessary anyway. And no, you can't just... You, I mean, you can absolutely spend the time to kill the Abyssal Champions uh, outside of what you're doing at the moment, but that's not going to actually do you any good. So don't, don't even bother with that. Don't waste your time trying to kill them while they chase you down and making them respawn and despawn, etc., etc. It's not worth it. Absolutely not worth it. If you all want to make your life easier, you can also take these blights out. Gives you a bit of a clear path as you go. The more orbs you dunk, the more aggressive they'll become, the faster they'll move, their helmets will start to come off, and they'll chase you down that way. So just hop right on over top of them, although that one's probably going to get me. Yep. Luckily, they don't do too much damage, uh, assuming you're not, like, directly underneath where they slam their axe down. Keep going. And we're just going to do this, the double jump swipe move to get there fast. But once you dunk the third one, this is where things start. So, there is a pool of light that is going to appear here. Here's how this works. You throw your super, you stand in the pool of light, and your next super comes right back. And you can just throw these in quick succession at each of the Abyssal Champions, and once all of them die, the challenge is over. But we still have one more left, it looks like. So hit him, and there we go. He must have despawned before the super killed him. But with all that done, we can collect our loot, and there is the first of three Ascendant Challenges that still remain.
All right, for the next Ascendant Challenge, the fifth Ascendant Challenge, we're going to want to head here to the Spine of Kiri's, which is where the Oracle is at, where we typically offer our offerings at the end of a given week and get ourselves a nice legendary chest and or we get to go to the, into the Ascendant Realm, but where Mara is usually waiting for us. Now... What we're going to want to do is check the Ascendant Challenge real quick. You'll know that it's the Spine of Curious because it says climb the bones and you'll find your ruin. Bones, spine, pretty simple hint. Now, this one is actually pretty far away and it actually helps to have your tincture active before you even get out here because then you can go across these platforms and get to where you need to go a whole lot quicker than you would otherwise. Now, this is actually a pretty easy Ascendant Challenge, but it's a it's a bit strange because this one actually has two variants and I'm going to actually be showing both of those variants, although not all the way through. There's there's one small detail that changes about them. But as we head out here and we're just going to want to kind of hop across the rocks as we go up and over these rocks, you will see, boom, there's a portal and we're going to want to head on into this now. This is what I'm talking about as far as variants are concerned. This, These have different obstacles. Now, the point of this Ascendant Challenge is just to climb to the top, and you're going to find a boss up there that you're going to have to kill. However, to climb up there, you're going to need to be dodging snipers, whether vandals or hobgoblins, and you're also going to be dealing with uh, different kinds of obstacles. So this one is actually the easier of the two. This one has these taken bombs. And whenever you get in the in range of these bombs, you can actually shoot them, uh, but you have to be up close enough to deactivate them. Although they do seem to be exploding. I think it's actually because these bombs are technically two bombs in one, which does make them a little hard to deactivate in time. If you really want to, you can absolutely just sprint past them to mitigate your damage as much as possible. But you are allowed to obviously shoot them out. Now, I'm actually going to kill myself here because I want to show the other variant to this really quickly. So let's head back on into the portal because this other one is actually a little bit harder. And the reason why is because you actually have things that can knock you off the cliff as opposed to things that just straight up do damage to you, which those are obviously uh, a bit different from one another. Let's head back on inside. And now this time, you won't see the obstacles activated until you get up pretty darn close. But this time we have those little wall booper things that we have to deal with. And these I find to be a whole lot more obnoxious because they can displace you very easily. Um, but they also don't do a whole lot of damage to you very easily if, as long as you know how to avoid them and dodge them. It, it's kind of a catch-22. If you're ever trying to like land somewhere and you're a bit, you know, you're doing so a, a bit frantically, not as prepared for the situation, they can really catch you off guard, which is frustrating, but... Aside from that, they're really not too hard to deal with. Now, when you get to the center platform, you want to find the stairs that's leading up. This is the way you want to go. All of the other paths are kind of a nothing burger. They'll just take you back down or off to just some dead end. So ignore all of those and wait for that to explode. And then we're going to jump across. We'll keep going. We're actually going to finish it this time. Don't worry. I promise. I did that intentionally. Ooh, that was really close. So we got Vandals in this one. I believe the Bombs one has the Hobgoblins. That's the difference between the two. You know, maybe this one actually... No, never mind. This one, they have both. They have both. I am incorrect. They just are uh, sitting in different spots. But get all the way up to this middle one. And before you even get up here, the Thralls are going to spawn in. You can kill them, but they're not required. They're just there to distract you. The real thing that you're after is what's on top of the center platform. And that is a giant Taken Phalanx. Now, of course... I am just going to outright super him. It's good to have your super available for these challenges at all times because they make your job uh, so much easier. But once he is dead, you can clear out the rest of the room if you want to. Make your life a lot easier. Grab these ungrams that he dropped, I guess, which is also pretty cool. Grab your chest. And there we go. Ascendant challenge is complete. We only have one left to do. And for the final Ascendant Challenge, we're going to be doing one that's actually, I would say, the most vague out of all of the clues thus far. So it says, crush the first queen's crown beneath your boot heel. Now, you're probably wondering what, like, what location has anything to do with that in name. Well, it all makes sense in a moment, but we want to start here at Rhea Sylvia, and we're going to want to head on in here. This is where the mission of this of the final curse week, Dark Monastery, also takes place. So we're going to want to head all the way through here, and I'm just going to kind of cut until we're in the area we need to be into. I just wanted to kind of show where you want to start at. 
Now, we are here in Harbinger's Seclude. You remember this room back here? This is where we would fight that boss before we go through the portal again in the Dark Monastery mission all the way here at the end. Now, it says we need to crush the... Let's reread that whole thing. Uh, crush the first queen's crown beneath your boot hill. Well, the first queen, the first queen of the Awoken, is represented by that statue right here, which you actually see that statue all over the Dreaming City. Um, but that is not Mara Sav. That is a different Awoken. I believe it's actually Mara's mother, um, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, her statue right here is obviously going to be up at the top. So by crush the boot heel, it means literally go up on top of her head. Now, you're probably wondering how do we get to that. Well, if you go right up here to the bridge, turn right, and you will see that platforms are starting to form as long as you are ascendant. So we're going to want to just kind of follow these all the way up and around. And then we'll be able to jump on into this thing, which this is... It, it can actually be, like, the most difficult Ascendant challenge, actually, if you're not careful. It's a very easy one to die in. So it's a platforming challenge to start. And we're trying to make it all the way to the end of this area, which is in that little temple over there. So let's kind of head on through here. If you need anything that boosts your jumping ability, probably a good idea. I mean, it's not 100% necessary. This is probably not the hardest uh, platforming challenge of all of them. It's, like maybe the second most difficult, but it can catch you off guard and it gets worse uh, actually on the way back when you're trying to finish the challenge than it is on the way there. So we're going to head all the way over here. And once we get here, you will see that there is a bunch of knights and a bunch of wizards around them. Now, our immediate focus is to kill the wizards. We can't harm the knights because the knights uh, can only be hurt by this sword that is in the middle, but it is currently unobtainable. Uh, we can't actually get to it until we kill everything in here. I'm just Jotun to just kind of burn my way through everything. But once we kill all of the other enemies in here, except for the knights, the sword will finally be allowed. Or will finally be allowed to pick that thing up. So just ignore them. Keep moving around, killing everything else, and then now you should be good. All right. So take this thing, and once you do that, I would actually advise kind of moving away from the knights because they will start to follow you. You're going to want to take care of the enemies that are going to give you the most trouble, which are these phalanxes, because they can actually boop you around. Now this sword. If you can't tell, has a lot of ammo, which means you can just basically swing this thing indefinitely, which is actually important to a lot of things in this mission, not just the challenge itself. So the slams are good for a lot of damage, but of course the usual sword combo is probably the best. I'm going to save that supercharge for one of the other knights as we take them out. They will only rise after we kill the first one, so let's get them together to do that damage. And now let's just kind of focus on both of them one after the other, and that should do it. And once all the knights are dead, everything else will, I believe, is at least supposed to despawn, but apparently there's a few stragglers behind. So, once that's all done, a rift will open. It's now on the far side of the room, not where we came in. It's the opposite side. We have to follow a path that is going to take us all the way over that way while platforms fly by and vandals shoot at us and phalanxes and goblins protect them. So this is where things get a little bit more tricky. Now, there are a couple of ways of actually circumventing this, and I'm going to actually demonstrate a couple of those to you guys right off the bat, or at least the main one. I'm going to see if I can actually do this right. So there are actually some secret, and that was not the right jump. There are actually some secret paths all over this Ascendant Challenge that will lead to various other things like collectibles and the like. If you can jump up on there, here's one thing that you can actually do as long as you still have a lot of sword ammo left, although I would highly recommend actually jumping from the top of this platform before you do it. But guess what? You can actually, if you do this right, sword spam your way across the entire gap without getting hit by anything without running into pretty much any obstacle and not having to really deal with the platforming challenge whatsoever. It is much easier for warlocks to get up there than it is for hunters without stompies, and titans have a relatively easy time of doing it as well. But there you go. That is the Ascendant Challenge. Like I said, we could platform right across that. There is a secret... Um, pillar that is all the way back there. If you are trying to collect Ahamkara bones, there is one set that is over on that. So uh, that is something to also keep in mind. This Ascendant Challenge actually has a lot more going uh, for it than I have immediately made clear. But yeah, it's 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 really not too challenging if you just do that. And then again, 
Just be smart with your swords and don't let yourself get absolutely overwhelmed by everything else. But there we go. And you can actually keep this sword for a little while as well. Uh, I believe you can actually keep it till your ammo completely runs out. So you can go around and play play around with this thing at least as long as you're still in here in Harbinger Seclude. I think if you try to leave the area, it will take the sword away from you. But uh, guys, that is going to be it. That is it for the Ascendant Challenges. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode very, very much. And I will see you all in the next one.